Mr Chair. Sarah Dowling. Well, thank you, Mr Chair, uh, for this opportunity to speak um, in the Committee of the Whole on um, part one, which is, contains the substantive um, provisions on this film's videos and publications classification, interim restriction order classification amendment um, bill. Of course, brought in the name of Mr Chris Bishop, and it is a very good um, little bill, a technical amendment, but one that is going to have great application in this area. So, um, with respect to um, Clause 4, which of course inserts and, and replaces um, Section 9 in the Principal Act, um, it does extend the toolbox available um, to um, the film's videos and publications classification team to be able to make uh, more meaningful rulings um, in the interim with respect to um, publications. And as the member rightly pointed out, this came about because of um, the, the situation with Into the River, um, where the president um, of the Board of Review was left with very little options um, once an appeal was lost. So the president um, either had the option to completely ban the publication or, of course, to or, reinstate... Or, or, I am going to interrupt the member now and to remind her we are at the committee stage debate uh, and, and I think it becomes sort of particularly apparent uh, when the member's making a very similar speech to an earlier member um, that, um, which I probably should have warned that member not to do, uh, and it is also irrelevant. It, the member's got to talk to the committee stage. The, the detail of these clauses, um, or not at all. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, I, I was going to come back to um, Clause 4, um, which does, of course, replace um, Section 49 in, with the, in the Principal Act, um, in particular... Uh, Section 49, um, subclause 3b, and come back to the fact that the toolbox has been widened um, and more um, flexibility given to um, the President with respect to interim orders. And if I just um, go through that here, um, there's two subsections to allow an interim order to more flexibility to apply it to persons who have attained the age of 18 years or a specified younger age um, or a specified persons or classes of persons. And when we look at that, when, we, when we're talking about um, banning publications or restricting publications um, in the interim, when, as my colleague has noted, people have made an investment in um, a publication, if that is suddenly ripped from them, um, they need to have some sort of um, flexibility in the system, or we do, that the, the, the um, classification team needs to have flexibility in the system um, to go back to earlier orders or to create par parameters to um, protect people um, socially or economically, um, maintaining that balance between protection and freedom of speech. And I note the member talked in particular about um, uh, in clause for the insertion of 49.3b2 um, with respect to the, um, creating a specified persons or classes of persons, um, talking about tertiary study, um, them as a range of people that could be looking at studying um, a novel or a publication in some way as part of their um, literature degree. And so if they were somewhat through that, it may be appropriate that they continue throughout that study. And I don't think it just necessarily applies to tertiary um, institutions. We did have discussion about this in the committee that, um, you know, it could go wider. It could be um, high school children with respect to some certain novels. Um, it could be any group of um, people that may have the need to have an interim order upheld for them so that they can study um, that particular piece of literature. So I don't think it's an elitist thing. I think it's protecting um, a group of people in the interim to continue that study, um, all the while why the classification team balances freedom of speech versus the public interest. Thank you. Mr Chair. Uh, Chris Bishop. Oh, thank you very much, Mr Chair. Um, 